And Stephen King is mentally healthy. Yeah, I mean, what just the, that the socks hat is like part of his image is kind of Stephen Wright to an extent too. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember the last time I saw Stephen Wright without a cap on. Yeah, yeah, he was wearing kind of that old timey cap in that last special. I like that one. Yeah. Stephen Wright's good people. All right, how are we starting this off? Are we starting with the I thought we just did my, I uh, that my whole winnings? hat thing? Oh, is that the the firecracker opening that we have after three weeks off? <laughs> <laughs> We're coming back in like gangbusters. I like hey, that. You know who else wore hat? What is that? Is that a fan? Uh, no, no, it's just a light. Oh, that's cool. It looks like a fan. Yeah, no, it's got or kind a of drone a even. vibe. Yeah. Cool. That is, that's, that's sexy. Thank you. The whole house is sexy. The clock isn't sexy. Oh, you haven't seen the clock in person. As soon as you actually were within three feet of that clock, your pants would be off. <laughs> All right. Where is my Super Bowl prize? Oh, fuck. Okay. You sent it to the wrong place. I still haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah. After being uh, three weeks after being victorious. Now, I don't no know this. Yeah, you won. That was a lot of bets we made. I can't open this fucking thing. Jesus. <laughs> I need a gun. I'm very glad. Yeah, the viewers, don't, our listeners don't know. Dan tried to get me to change my pick. Yeah, because uh, I had the game a different started. bet going. So I wanted, I wanted to have unity. And I'm very glad I stuck so, my guns. I got you. I don't know if this is a good gift. There's definitely people in my life that this would be a joke gift for to get them a book. Okay. I got you a book. But you'll read a book. Uh, I like books. You like I'll books. totally read a book. Cool. And the bubble wrap. Yeah, what's is the book? Fun. I wish I could just keep the nice. bubble wrap on because I'm going to mail. How am I going to get this to you? You live in fucking Georgia uh, or wherever the fuck. No. I'm, I'm going to come in to do some shows. Come in and okay. we'll, we'll figure out a place that we're both going to tell some jokes at, do some sketches. Okay. Jesus, how many fucking times they wrap this thing? They're being very, very protective of this book. Oh my God. Did you get me a Bible? <laughs> L. Ron Hubbard wrote the Bible. Of the I got you a Bible. Cool. I got you a book. I've, it's an easy read as I have read it. I believe it okay. was written by a Herald writer. So it's not, uh, I'm going to say 600 words. Okay. Uh, it is about the Boston uh, busing riots and the, oh. and the 1976 and then 19, yeah, the 1976 Boston Celtics. I have not read this, and I would like to read this. Okay, this is cool. a good prize. And as evident by you can't judge a book by its cover, it's about the 1976 yep. Boston Celtics. On the cover, Larry Bird. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. When was this written? Because it had to have been written in the 80s when they just put Bird on everything to sell. No, no, it's recent. The author is um, Michael Conley, who I'm guessing could be from here. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Uh, yeah, he was a Herald writer. He, he lives in West Roxbury. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So All I right. don't know what his opinion on those busing boycotts is going to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. But I'm excited to read this. It's, actually, it's very I good. Read it. I, I read it, so it's a very easy read. The, the font I is read wonderful. It disappointing. I don't know if you can zoom yeah. in, but look at that font. That's like two and a half. That's a quality font. Yep. Almost, yeah, I just had to increase Almost the font makes size you wish you were going blind. <laughs> I'm getting there. Just bumped up the font size. No shit. All my texts are now bigger. Yeah, I found I a bunch of books in the garbage the other day. And mm -hmm. uh, one of them was Mario Puzo's um, The Family. Have you read that? Nope. No. I'm trying to figure out if it sucks before I the read it. The only Puzo I ever read was The Godfather. Yeah, yeah. That's And the only one I've ever heard of outside of that is this one. Yeah. I uh it's funny because I'm excited to read this Celtics book. I just quit a Celtics book uh that I really did not enjoy. Which one? The it's the Shaughnessy book that just came out, which oh, was my first I clue. To an interview about fuck Dan Shaughnessy. He's the worst. He could have been a good writer, and he just decided to become the world's first internet troll 20 years before the internet was invented. 
Yeah, no, he's the most unfun sports writer imaginable. Yeah, he makes everything worse. To the point where, why are you here? Mm -hmm. yeah. If you don't like this, I got go go be a beat cop or something. Yeah. Like fucking, or a beat cop writer. Do something, do an unfun part of the news if you're going to be actively yeah. unfun. I, I refuse to give him any of my money, but a friend of mine read it and sent it to me. So I started it because it was about the mid 80s Celtics. I'm like, all right, even Shaughnessy can't make this unfun. And he did. Yeah. Well, the he fucking absolutely uh, managed to make it all about Dan Shaughnessy. Outside of the narration, I almost think there should be no more Celtics things because of that 30 for 30. Which had which one? The awfully Celtics had Lakers Mark one? Wahlberg narrating it. Yeah, that was bad. That was fucking awful. They should almost do that over again. Yeah. Yeah, that was close to unwatchable. What Boston celebrity would you trust with it? We don't have a lot. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's the problem whenever they do that Boston Lakers thing is our, our celebrity is always really bad. What if it was? It wasn't done... even Mark Wahlberg. It was. It what was about done, Conan? Wasn't it? I bet Conan would be good at it. I don't think Conan followed basketball. Yeah, but I think Conan he, could I be think good in the interviews. He'd get something out of the players. He would be fun, but there, there, you would know the whole time that he didn't really care. Okay, and you can't sustain a documentary that long that way. It's got to right. be. Because there's so many funny people from Boston, but they, none of they them give just, a shit about They should have just had James Worthy and Cedric Maxwell. They were fucking great during that thing. That would have been much better. Yes. Yes. Just get any of those guys to talk about it. I We didn't need narration. Cedric Maxwell was like stole the show. It was fucking awesome. It's, he's been great for like, 20 years on the radio. Yeah, yeah. He's but been amazing. I was listening to a thing with him. He said like after that came on, Tatum like was obsessed with him after <laughs> Like, you didn't know who he was. There's no way you'd know who he was. You know, nobody talks to the no. fucking radio guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cedric Maxwell, very underrated Celtic. Oh, he's amazing. Yeah. Yep. And I love how pissed he still gets about uh, not winning for being the finals MVP. Oh, I never heard that. It's like anytime he gets interviewed on the radio, he brings up the fact that he was the finals MVP, and it was the only... NBA finals where the MVP did not get a car. He got a watch. Like, <laughs> I got a watch. Everybody got a car. Next time around, Larry Bird got a Trans Am. I got a watch. Yeah. I, I read yeah. Tommy Heinsohn's my eighth grade book report was I read the book. Um, shit. This one's called rebound. The other one was called give him the hook by Tommy Heinsohn. Was my was eighth fun? grade. The book was written in like 1981. So, like, part of my report was like, oh, he really thinks this Akeem Olajuwon is going to be a good player. <laughs> like 2000. Hey, uh, something happened that made me think of you in our last talk. Uh, there was an argument, a fun one, between Stephen A. Smith and Chris Russo about whether Steph was a, a top 10 all-time player. Top 10, is so, top 10 is so hard now. Yeah. Stephen A was trying to make the case, and then Chris Russo kept pointing out all these guys he could not put Steph Curry in front of. And yeah, Stephen like, A just didn't want to admit it. It's hard to say it because they're completely different people. But, like, basketball has been around long enough that there have been so many styles of play mm -hmm. that there are just great players that wouldn't fit today. Yeah. You know, like, I know they're nothing alike, but if you think about it, in what, that's the one way Bill Russell and Ty Cobb are alike. In what way? That he that dated, neither of them could dated play today. styles of play of those guys. See, uh, and when I look back on those years, I don't think Mikan could have played now. I think Russell would have dominated now. Like how? By all accounts, because he was so fast, he was an excellent passer for a center. He focused on defense in a way that most of those guys didn't. I mean, he could really adjust his game to whatever that team needed. He was sure. one of the great athletes of he all time. Been he given was like up the about... second. He was the second best high jumper in the world. He would have been giving up about 70 pounds to Jokic. Yeah, but think about how much smaller most of the NBA is now. He would be giving up some size. I mean, that's about what he gave up to Wilt, and he did okay against Wilt. He was about as big as Jason Tatum. Uh, he, was, he's, he was heavier than Tatum. How much? 
What do you think Tatum weighs? I think Russell was like 225 or something like that. No, Russell was heavier than that. Russell, I mean, if he was 6'9 and 225, he'd be a rare. I'm pretty good at guessing the weights of people 50 years ago. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to edge into your egg layer. Don't even get me started on jelly beans. <laughs> Russell, I think, could have played today. And also, I don't think Steph could have played back in the 50s and 60s because they would have beat the shit out of him. For being black? <laughs> no, for, <laughs> for being small. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. On defense, they would have destroyed him. <laughs> In certain cities, it sounds like that could have been the case. Anyway. I, I'm sure he did not want to travel to St. Louis to play the Hawks at any point in that <laughs> period of time. Um, yeah. What about the current Celtics? Are you happy? I'm thrilled. I don't know how the fuck did this happened. Did you expect this? I didn't really expect no. this. No. They've been mediocre, which is being kind, for two years. Yeah. And it's essentially the same team. Yeah. Pieces around I, the main pieces have changed, but it's basically the same team that's been mediocre to poor for two straight years. Well, you for, sometimes like he just doesn't put up stats, but you forget Al Horford does a lot of things. He does. Getting so, Al Horford back. I, I listen to difference. too many basketball podcasts. <laughs> How many? I think four. <laughs> and one of the, uh, the hoop collective, I think they were talking about like, so because you have Hortford, he gets to be the first line on your pick and roll D. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then they basically put time Lord in the corner and let him play free safety. Yeah. So they're not really sure he's like ready to be like your first line defensive guy yet. Mm-hmm. He's just yeah. a freak athlete. With good hands. Mm-hmm. So and that's one of the reasons. I mean, at getting Al, I was a big fan of the trade when it happened, and he's been better than I thought he'd be. I thought he'd be great for the team because he would set the other guys up. He never needs to be the star. He's he's a guy who does all the little oh, yeah. things, which yeah, is yeah. cliche. You, you'd be thrilled. But I also I didn't think he'd be able to play at this high a level at this Th- point. They'd be thrilled if he gave you, you know. I didn't expect anything from him, but if he made $12 million, you'd fucking love him. Yeah. <laughs> but if he, he makes $26 million, it sucks to have a guy that makes that much money and not score. But look at how much better he's made the rest of the team. I know. It's way better. And if he, he, was he a did free it every, agent, would he get $26 million? He did million it pretty right much now? every no, year he was here. Us. It looked like he was starting to get old man knees the last year he was here. Yeah. Yeah. But when you look at what he has done for this team, and that's not even counting the fact that they managed to unload the Kemba contract by getting him. Oh, complete win. <laughs> I mean, it was kind of worth it just to get rid of Kemba. God bless Kemba. He's a wonderful man. But thank God we got rid of that we contract. We have always just said that, by the way. We don't know that. Everybody just kept From saying he was so publicly. nice. He was so nice and shit. Yeah. But Do I know he's never killed anyone? I don't know that. Well, that's he what I mean. Like, like Guys like OJ and stuff like that. When people said they were affable, like how base level affable do you have to be for people to think you're really nice when you're like a super rich athlete? Aaron Hernandez, we gave him a contract. Yeah, but no one said, wow, that what a special human being that guy was. Somebody said you'd be perfect to play with Tim Tebow. Just add something to the locker room. But you know what that. I mean? Like the, the the bar for a good guy is very low. Is my point. It is lower amongst professional athletes and celebrities. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There is no doubt that you don't need to do as much to be considered a good guy. Although well, there have been point, people that I consider good I guys, guys that like I know Kyrie, that have done horrible, horrible things. Oh, like who? Well, it's not, we don't have, that's, I would have said their names if I felt comfortable <laughs> given their names. Did Oh, you mean like personal, like, like friends of yours? Former friends? No, I, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't, I thought you were, I, I thought you were more referring to athletes who fell into that category. Uh, sorry about that. I did not mean to. It's to the get same you to thing. It's the same thing. I deemed you them. Potentially, I used to be friends with. I deemed them mm-hmm. good upon a very small sample. 
Hmm. You're pixelating a lot, Mike. Yeah. Or maybe it's me. Am I? Um, you're freezing a little bit, but your audio is stink. Okay. Yeah, I just, think you're the same. Yeah, yeah. Let me slide over a little <laughs> you bit. You just look I mean, really get drunk for brief the, intervals. Uh, to the satellite dish behind me. Oh. Tatum is six eight. Well, wow. as long as I look sober Will occasionally. Six and Oh, did you say Wilt or Russell? Oh, no, Russell. I'm sorry. Russell. Sorry, Russell. Russell. Russell is 6'10". 6'10", 2'15", and Tatum is what? 6'2". Yeah, he's five pounds lighter I'm than I'm sorry. Him. Wait a second. 6'10", 2'15"? I don't want you looking things up on your fucking 98K modem over there. <laughs> Hang on. Bill Russell, wait? 2'15"? Oh, they were lying. They were smoking no three packs a day back then. They never pounds. ate. Bill Russell was committed to his health. You're thinking of Tommy Heinz. Bill uh, Russell was in his cryo chamber every night. No, there's a great picture of the, of the 60s Celtics. He was complaining. Some guy was complaining about Peter May. You know who that yeah. is? Globe writer yeah, was complaining writer. about the, the conditioning with like Antoine Walker and shit. History proved him right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But... He fucking hated Antoine Walker. Uh, but the picture is of uh, Russell, Kuzi, Heinsohn, uh Russell. Who the fuck am I missing? Casey Jones. Yeah, yeah the, all them fucking yeah. guys. There's a, underneath it says the most athletic team ever. They're all smoking. <laughs> was Antoine Walker the worst Celtic that was presented as, as being like great as an all-star? <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I loved him. He was like the first level. He was the first athlete I really gave a shit about. Yeah. Him and Pedro. You look back on what he did, and it's kind of shocking that he actually got a max contract and was an all star. Oh, no. He just considered a great History proved him right with the threes. He just wasn't that good at it. Yeah. Philosophically, he knew what to do. He just couldn't well, actually. Well, I don't shoot know them. if he was. I wouldn't call him a philosopher. <laughs> I mean, I think that he realized, like, oh, this is a better <laughs> shot kept philo- for basketball. The only thing he philosophized was you should split fives. <laughs> hey, we just missed the anniversary of the Patino rant. Um, I hate to say Rick Patino was right. It's the most negative no. shit town ever. They were pointing out how fucking bad he was at his job, and they were correct. Wasn't it? I mean, it was his fault. He traded. It was his fault. He made some awful trades. Yes. By the way, the Ukrainian crisis would have been a great nickname for Vitaly Potapico. <laughs> that actually would have been very good. I feel like if Dino was over there, I think I texted you that yesterday. Did I? I think I sent you a text. No, I didn't get that. No. Oh. All right. That went to some other guy. Oh, Cedric the Entertainer? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I have you under the Entertainer as well. That's nice of you. Thank <laughs> you. Dino is a good player. I wish we had gotten Dino Roger five years earlier than we did. Oh, not Dino. Fucking uh, Vitaly Patapico. That was oh, Vitaly, I'm sorry. That was Patino's I, I mean biggest Dino. goof Dino, was yeah. he traded fucking uh, the pick that <sighs> ended up being Andre Miller. For uh, uh, Vitaly Potapico. Yeah. I mean, that's one of many goofs. It's one of many. Like he, he, Every draft was terrible. Every signing was bad. Andrew He DeClerc. drafted Joe Johnson. He just fucking traded him right away. No, that was under the, uh, the O'Brien administration. Was that it? That was Chris Wallace. And, yeah. Yeah, that was after Patino was gone. What a fucking awful trade that was. Oh, terrible. Terrible. So One yeah. of those guys. But that's the point. If you had Joe Johnson, and Antoine Walker, Paul Pierce, Antoine Walker can now just kind of board and kind of be a facilitator, which is what he was good at. His problem was when he went inside, fucking Kenyon Martin would block him with two hands. Oh, Kenyon Martin destroyed Antoine Walker in every sense. As a basketball player, I don't think he was ever the same person again. 
What destroyed Antoine more, Kenyon Martin or the Herod's Casino? I think I think the Chick Fil A sandwich. Oh yeah, destroyed <laughs> Antoine Walker more than anything. It turned out to be option three. Yeah. Did you read the article following him trying to catch on with the G League a couple of years ago? I lo- I would go to a G League game if Antoine Walker was in it. I would go too, but the article was so depressing. So it was just like he's in this little two bedroom apartment. He's hurting for money. There's just fast food boxes everywhere. Speaking of, you know, Big Baby's bummer. doing stand up. I do. Oh, Big Baby. <laughs> Are you going to oh, go? Baby. I might go. I, I'm toying with it. Yeah, I might I'm go when he's in Foxborough. It. Yeah. He's doing uh, Worcester and Foxborough, right? Yeah, yeah. What? The one thing I actually what Celtic, to, what, I, what Celtic from that era would you like to see open for him? Because I know it's easy uh, for me, Marquise Daniels. Really? That is not the pick I was expecting. I was expecting, I mean, uh, what is it, Shrek and the Donkey. Who is the little guy? Oh, Nate Robinson? Nate Robinson. That seems like I think a he's going to be high energy, physical. I'm not into that. He's going to do too much crowd work to follow. I think, I think fucking Marquise Daniels has some stories. How do you feel about like celebrities and athletes doing uh, weekends at a comedy club? Does that bother you or are you okay with it? I don't give a shit. I'm fine with it. The one thing I want to tell... Especially when it's somebody I like. I like fucking Big Baby. The one thing I want to tell these guys, like Piven and Baby and all these celebrities who, for whatever reason, need to start doing stand-up to make money, is, look, you don't have an hour of material, and that's okay. Yeah. Do 10, 15 minutes of material, and then do a QA and a for half an hour, Uh and everyone will be happy. Everyone will enjoy the Q&A, and you're going to get some material out of the Q&A and you can write that down, and that can be a part of your 15 minutes the next night or the next week, and that's how you can build an act. But stop trying to do 45 minutes of material because you can't do it. What question, do would you ask, be what question would you ask Jeremy Piven? Would I ask Piven? I mean, that, that's the problem with Piven was he, there were a lot of questions he couldn't answer. I would ask him about hair plugs. Yeah. And how he somehow convinced America into thinking Entourage was funny. <laughs> Yeah, Entourage. I went back and watched an old episode. That was a terrible show. It was bad. And everybody <laughs> liked it at first. And then it took like one person on Twitter to just be like, hey, this sucks, right? And everybody went, like, yeah, yeah, this does suck. Yeah. There was some fun wish fulfillment uh, in, in watching it. And I will say, Ari, the first couple of years, made me, made me chuckle. Piven was good in that show. Yeah, yeah. Like there it. was a lot of TV like that back then where it all just went good all mm-hmm. the time. That was yeah. a Californication, was that, for writers? Mm-hmm. David Duchovny. Yep. Yeah, yeah, he's like a, not what <laughs> writers look like. Yeah. <laughs> you know who gets laid more than anybody? Yeah, right. Authors. A fucking newspaper columnists. <laughs> <laughs> and then fucking on, like, what was it? Dennis Leary's show. He's like a fifty oh, five he's like a fifty year old squirrely firefighter that gets laid every episode. Yeah. Not one woman can keep their pants on when they're around Dennis Leary. For this fucking John to see Irishman. <laughs> I love the level of wish fulfillment that happens when comedians make shows. When they make shows. <laughs> what it what it ends up being is the end of a bad story. You know what I mean? Like somebody tells a shit story and they're like, Yeah, and then I kicked his ass. <laughs> got laid too i got laid at the end of the yeah. story yeah. comedian sitcoms are all the end of their story <laughs> the end of a failed story <laughs> <laughs> which is one of the things that kind of uh, caught me about everybody loves raymond was that somehow he was still just sort of a depressed hand-picked house husband what was his job? But he I never did get watched, to be a sports columnist. Sports I never columnist. watched uh, Everybody Loves Raymond. George, I, 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 seen... I once heard George Carlin call it Raymond Blows the Mailman. <laughs> <laughs> he was good. I got in a fight with my ex-girlfriend about Everybody Loves Raymond once. What, what, um, I, what, what was his job in it? He was a sports columnist. Oh, no shit. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, that, that was his wish, wish fulfillment. They all wanted to be columnists. Because in life, he was a bank teller before he made it. Oh, was he? 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've never seen yeah, an episode uh, of Everybody Loves Raymond. My ex-girlfriend liked Everybody Loves Raymond. And like we were watching an episode because she wanted to. And his wife was pissed that she that she was doing the housework and he wasn't helping. Mm -hmm. And I made the mistake of pointing out, well, he does earn all the money. And, you know, she doesn't work. So is it terrible that she does most of the housework? And man, did we get in a fight? Whew. Yeah, I but. When one involves physical labor and the other doesn't like I, I don't consider. I don't know. I kind of grew up. I, I didn't learn any of it, but I grew up in a construction family and like they yeah. would bleed and shit at work. So when you're lazy, yeah. not working, like if you're not working, then you just want to lay on a couch all day. But if you just fucking had to write like, oh, Fernando Tatis went two for three, <laughs> then yeah, fucking yeah. help with the dishes. Yeah. I and that that was the fight that we got into, which is I'm not saying he shouldn't help, but it seems like she's resentful that he's not doing all the housework. Like it was every episode is why am I cleaning this room? Yeah, yeah. And my hey, point this was, show well, sucks. Yeah, it was terrible. It sounds it really terrible. bad. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. It was the I've same show it. every week. I pretty much only watched Seinfeld, Arrested Development, and Veep. I gotta watch and Veep. Curb. Love Curb. Seinfeld has been fun to have on Netflix. I haven't watched. I, I can just kind of recite them in my head at this point. It's fine. I was not a gigantic Seinfeld fan the first time around, and now I'm enjoying them more upon yeah. rewatching. It's like it's almost like Seinfeld for me is like Guns and Roses. Like I don't mm -hmm. listen to Guns and Roses, but every now and then I'll be like, "Hey, my Michelle's stuck in my head." <laughs> I, I, I would or November rain at a, at a long red light. Oh, November rain. That was <laughs> that was jumping the shark for Guns N' Roses. Oh, the guitar solo is great. Yeah. You could just tell Slash didn't want to do anything in that song. Like even in the video, he walks out of the church and is just playing the guitar in the middle of the desert. She's like, this is a fucking stupid video, and I'm just going to go out here and play the guitar. You know that's not how they really recorded the song, right? That's how they made the video. <laughs> I don't think you know how rock and roll <laughs> they works. They didn't CGI him into the desert. Like, he was there. Your point is so uh, bad that the internet gave up on you. <laughs> My point was so good that it wanted to pause in that. Seems like if you move it, it all, it'll pixelate. Here, try like that. <laughs> all right, then I'll try to be still. Be very still. <laughs> I will be very completely still. still, and you won't even know when it freezes. <laughs> Put some yeah. fucking aluminum foil over your head or something. <laughs> I feel like the internet is pointing out this is the very slow time in sports. <laughs> Like the oh, what do you mean? The best win ever yesterday. That was fucking great. That was a great win. And I love that Kyrie Irving looked so bad in that great win. Yeah. No, he looks uh, slow, honestly. He looks a little slow. They were hunting him all game long. It was That's so true. nice to see. That would happen no matter what, though. Typically, most teams hunt yeah. the point guard. So it's like like any predator, you go after the smallest prey. Yeah, but most of the time, the small prey learns not to challenge a bear head on. What? When you are a fox? No, he's not trying to. You, get you don't off wave of off help. Shit. You don't wave off help and say, "No, no, 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 no! I got this bear. Mm -hmm. I'm defending him. I'm yeah, fine. Yeah. I don't oh, need Tatum, any help." Tatum like dicked him a bunch of times. Tatum's yeah. handle got better. Yeah, much. Yeah, and he Kyrie looks, Irving. I like that I, I he's remain, going so hard to the hoop. The Nets have nobody as far as big men. No, it's terrible. They have no rim protection at all. Yeah, so Simmons will help that, but I don't know. I mean, they're not. They're definitely not a complete team right now. They're missing a thirty million dollar guy. Yeah, I'm emotionally conflicted about Kyrie these years later. I am very glad he's not on my team. Uh, I'm so I don't glad want he's not on my team. Chant. Yeah, very glad. I don't want the fans to chant Kyrie sucks. 
Because why? He, we're gone and we're better off without him. It's fine. Don't I'm, give him that satisfaction. We were happy the second important. we got. Yeah. I mean, the thing I yeah. wish I we did was re-sign Rozier, actually. Yeah, that was like Rozier's contract mess. ended up looking pretty reasonable. And you throw him he, on this. He team. would be great on this team. I'd probably yeah, rather have him than White. Yeah, we would be doing a 2027 pick swap if we just kept Terry Rozier. But Kyrie, what he does well is so much fun that I miss watching him on my team at times. I don't miss watching him wave off help to defend Giannis himself, Mm -hmm. but I still miss watching his handle. He's one of the best finishers around the rim I've ever seen. That shot that he took yesterday where it was just a rainbow that stayed up in the air so long and went straight through the net was so pretty and so much fun. Yes. It made me go, that's what's special about Kyrie. It's special, but it's like he's got seemingly has, I think one theory of why he's not trying to get the vaccine and stuff is he just doesn't think he can make it through an NBA season. No, I agree. He's not strong. He's, he's got like, I think he's got like old man knees. Conspiracy. Mike agrees with you. He's looking at it and going, I've never been able to play a full season. What if I just don't do this? And then I also don't have to deal with home crowds Mm -hmm. who are expecting too much from me and might get on me when I don't play well. So what if I just played like 38 games this season and then I'm healthy for the playoffs? I don't know if you can make it through the playoffs. Like I I just think if a guy like that loses a little bit of athleticism, you have to be able to guard people. And we, we just kept setting picks on him yesterday, and he wasn't fighting through them. He can't. Tatum, Tatum had a three that he probably could have taken like a standing 10 count before he shot it. Yeah. And Kyrie yeah. just watched him. Yep. Yep. And somehow, the weirdest thing to me about Kyrie is after all the shit he did, he left these guys saying, you know what? Bye. I want to go back to New York. I want to play with better players. You guys aren't good enough. Came back, stomped on the logo, like just completely disrespects the team. And those guys cannot wait to hug him at the end of every game they play with him. Somehow all these guys still love Kyrie like he's family. I mean, I know some like I know some crazy people that I really like. You know what I mean? Sometimes, yeah. sometimes crazy people are funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? They Maybe are. he's fun. <laughs> Maybe he's a fun guy. Who the fuck knows? It doesn't mean he's smart. Yeah. There's something fun about having one guy around who believes the world is flat. Yeah. <laughs> there should be one guy like that in every group. Yeah, yeah. And at some point, somebody new is in the group, and you're like, hey, you want to see something If you have funny? lunch with that guy, you'll have a fucking fun conversation instead of taking a fucking picture of your fish tacos or whatever the hell. Yeah, go make sure you go to a restaurant with a globe and yeah. just wait. That's just a, wait. Like the, Chris Rock used to do a bit about like, you know, I'm rich and it's boring now. So I, I just always like to keep a crackhead around me. <laughs> I don't remember that bit. It was good. I think it was on Never Scared. <laughs> I have not seen that. I'm glad Chris, Chris Rock has not gotten canceled. Uh, oh, Which, by go- the way... He's no going to run at the Wilbur. I think I'm going to try to go. Yeah. Oh, nice. We're no close. comedian has gotten canceled for material. Can you think of a comedian who's gotten canceled because of something they said on stage? John Cleese was like uh, bothering me on Twitter because he was talking about cancel culture and wokeism. And I really just sat there and said, I can't think of a single comedian who's gotten canceled because of material. Yeah. Do you think that Monty Python wouldn't have gotten away with that? Um, you can't be a woman speech. Uh, it would have been different. Mm. I think that that joke was pretty pro LGBTQ. Honestly, like it, they just had a guy, and he John Cleese was sort of the dumbass going, "No, you can't." You can't you're I think keep, that joke going to keep it today. in the box. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good movie. Yeah. You like that it's one more? Or you like Holy Grail more? Holy Grail. Yeah, I guess I like Holy Grail more. Yeah, I like Holy Grail more. There are stretches of Life of Brian that that, that get pretty slow. Yeah, it's a really good movie, but I don't have to fast forward at its any of best, Holy Grail. It might be as good. Yeah, yeah it's the like, Holy Grail is more consistent, but at its best, yeah. Life of Brian might have better scenes. It might peak. It might peak higher. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, they're good. And everyone's still watching Monty Python. So I don't know what they thought. They think they've lost. Like, can you not do the same exact sketch that you did in 1964? Probably. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. I mean, Bill Russell used to smoke cigarettes. It changes. It changes. Tommy Heinsohn smoked. Tommy Stop Heinsohn Cassius smoked. Versions oh, what's of the, the, the famous, uh, famous story where Heinsohn quit smoking? And then he showed up he 20 pounds weight. overweight, and then an hour back yeah. made him start smoking again. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy still lived to what, 86? 86, yeah, yeah. Somewhere in his 80s. But I don't think that matters then. I don't think the, I think smoking's a cumulative effect thing. So I don't think you start getting hurt by that until you hit your like late thirties. Boy, we, I feel like we have now left my comfort zone in terms of my medical recommendations. I mean, Ted Williams almost hit 400 and fucking what year was that? The fifties? Did Ted Williams smoke? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no you way. No idea There's no Ted way Ted smoked. Williams didn't smoke. Ted Williams yeah. did every manly thing you could do. All right, so you have no evidence. You're just assuming that. Ted Williams lit his cigarettes with a flamethrower. Ted Williams was also like ahead of the curve on science and taking care of his body. So I am of the mind that Ted Williams did not smoke. A $10 gift bet that Ted Williams uh-huh. smoked cigarettes. Wait, wh- that he ever smoked a cigarette or that he bet, was a regular smoker? I'm willing to bet he endorsed cigarettes. This he might have Ted endorsed Williams them and still cigarettes. not smoked. Hang on. He might have endorsed them and still not smoked. What are we betting? He endorsed cigarettes. That he endorsed cigarettes? No yeah, bet. yeah. I bet he probably did. That's 10 bucks. I want a $10 gift. I didn't take the bet. Yeah, you did. I thought that never happened. You have to say No. No. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> Bullshit. All right. All right. We need to wrap this up. Uh, any final thoughts going into this weekend of sports? Um, I, oh, did you watch Winning Time? What is that? Oh, it's the HBO series about the Lakers. Oh, I got to watch that. I got to get HBO. I, I need an NBA season to end. I watch five hours of basketball a day. I just got through the first half of the first episode before we started this. It's great. Okay. Yeah. It's really, I, love, I mean, I really think, good. I think the big short is like one of the best movies of that I've seen. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't see enough yep. movies to make statements. Yeah, no, they're pulling it off. Riley is great as bus. And I'm kind of shocked how good the guy playing magic is. Cool. I'm, I'm into it. I'm I, super I thought that into would it. be an impossible role to cast and he's kind of pulling it off. Yeah, is it better than the Magic Hour? Nothing's as good as the Magic Hour. The Magic Hour was bad. I was just, I'm glad I was just, I was just old enough to appreciate what a train wreck that was. That was amazing. That was one of those things everyone thought it was going to be bad. It was somehow worse than it was. And the great thing about Magic is he left acting like it was a success. It's like, well, I proved I could do this. And now it's on to the <laughs> next time challenge. to fuck up something else. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like how he left the Lakers presidency. Yeah, yeah. It's like, um, all right. No, I started right a movie. I, I listened to a book uh, by, do you like Dennis Lehane? Oh, yeah. So by Dennis Lehane, it's the second in the series. The first one's amazing. It takes place on K Street, which is where I am right now. Uh, mm-hmm. in South Boston it's called The Given Day. It's great. The sequel, not as good. I read that, yeah. Live by Night. Live by Night. You read the it? The sequel is Live by Night. I did. I read them both. I liked them both. You liked them both. I listened to the second one and I hated it because mm-hmm. there was like a few sex scenes in it and they were being read uh-huh. by like a 75-year-old droll man and it was really uh, fucking disturbing. All right. So it like, took read, me, really took me out of it. Yeah. But then I I, wa- I read Live by Night first. Did you watch the movie? Yeah, it was bad. It is not bad. I def- I like yeah. I, I would actually like to like watch it with a bunch of comedians and like tweet about it or something like that because it's yeah it's I was shocked. I was excited about that. I'm like, oh, this is right in Ben Affleck's wheelhouse. And then we didn't find out until later that he had relapsed while making that movie. Oh, and really? It shows. Okay, yeah. something's amiss, and it's like immediately yeah. untrue to the book. Yeah, it's hard to be smug when you listen to it, but it's annoying. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, I listened to, but I think I got lucky because I did it in different order. I just got to, I stumbled upon Live by Night at the library as a recommendation. I saw Dennis Lane and I had read Mystic River uh, and uh, Prince of Thieves. I was like, oh yeah, let me try this. And so I read it and I really liked it. And then I found out that it was the sequel to The Given Day, which I read and was even better. Given Day is way better. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Okay. Given Day is great. Well, that's the next gift. But this is theirs for now. <laughs> All right. Close we'll figure comments. out where we are going to be performing at the same time and I can get that book. Where are you this weekend? Cape Cod. You're on Cape Cod. Where are you performing on Cape Cod? Early Cape Cod. No idea. <laughs> Early Cape Okay. I just write down. Are you working on? I write down general region and money. Okay. <laughs> so Cape Cod, zero dollars. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, on Friday or Saturday? Saturday. And then I don't know Friday. So maybe nothing. All right. All right. Maybe we can find a place to tell a couple of jokes at the, at the same time and then I can grab the book. Okay. Very cool. All right. Good. All right, everybody. Until I, of next course, time. have nothing to plug. This is WTF Until with Mark Marin. <laughs> and we'll tell you all about how we missed out on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Again. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. Kick ass.